This has been Urban Era. I've been Nisi. Hi, Doc. DJ. DJ, we had Derek here. We appreciate you coming. Uh, videos will be on YouTube and audio will be on Anchor. A lot of gems on yeah. the set, man. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. A lot of gems. Yeah, subscribe, like, hit up Derek's page, hit up Derek's Instagram. Yeah. Corporations work with him. He's worked yeah. with Converse, Samwise, yeah, like, Big Zoo. That's that's stuff. the plan this year. Like, <laughs> you guys, like, hit us up, man. We're ready to work for real. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm happy for you. I saw some of the... I remember I was running through your website. Yeah. Well, yeah. First of all, you have a good website. A lot of people have yeah, shit yeah, website. Yeah, yeah. Well. It, it is. I actually designed it myself. Oh, did you? It's only free. Yeah, like, I actually use... Um, this platform called Wix. Oh yeah, I heard of them. So yeah, you are you're so. the motherfucker that ads actually work on then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, literally. Yeah, right, like, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. But to be fair, like it wasn't even the ads though. It was like from early, like even before I actually started New Wave, like I knew about Wix from like um from uni. So Yeah. At a certain point after like, you know, you do your work and stuff like that, you want you wanna build a portfolio and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. basically, um I was using Wix early just to like learn how to design websites mm-hmm. early like I wasn't even going to do anything with it it was just like my own personal thing like to show my work you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so that's when I heard about it and then from there after I, I when I actually wanted to actually make a website then that's when I went to go, go went back and went to go check it out because it was the only platform where you could actually design something yeah, for yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. I remember since I've been a youth I've, I've been seeing ads for yeah, Wix, for Wix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There was, there's yeah. another one as well uh, you kind of, yeah, Squarespace. Yeah, Squarespace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I would have used Squarespace, but Squarespace you have to pay to even like start. Yeah, oh, really? like a membership thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with Wix, like it was like you can kind of mess around, mess around, and then when you actually want to make a website, then you can actually like. Oh, so it does come in physical form. We're having this Ooh, conversation beforehand. Yeah. We're thinking about is it just digital? Oh, that's no, it comes in. It's print as yeah, well. That's pretty yeah. cool. Um, and digital. Okay, where do you get? Where can you get this? Um, our web straight through our website, so newwavemagazine.com is where you can copy it. Um, all three covers are available. Okay. There's the Roy Woods one, there's the Omar Lay one, and then there's the Riley Ritchie one as well. Um, yeah, that dropped in November, so yeah, there's quite a few copies still. How frequently does it drop? Yeah. Huh? How frequently does so, it drop? So, last year we did two, so it's by month, by annually, not by monthly, by annually. Okay. So every we do twice a year. Um, in print. Okay. So okay. yeah. Um. A few different covers, but twice a year in print. Early last year, in January, that's when we dropped the one with um Eva Apio and um Pre Boy Doe. That was yeah, my favorite. I saw the one. Eva one. Yeah, that was a great one. The styling yeah. for that one. That how you pronounce her second it. name? Eva yeah. Apio. Oh, that's how you pronounce the second name. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's nice, you know. Now you're one of the first digital slash uh, graphic production studios mm. directors I've met. Mm. So how difficult has that been setting that up? Well, it's been a long process. Like it's li- really just been ser- um self taught um learning on your own, um developing, uh seeking. You know what I'm saying information from different avenues, looking at people that you like and their work and kind of copying it and then making your own way out of it and mm. things like that. So yeah, it's just um also with my background in what I used to do architecture, like. I feel like that really gave me a good base um, to kind of understand various aspects and just aesthetics in general. How come? Yeah. Structure. How come? So Design based, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like, I don't know if you've seen online, like there's this conversation about art and design. Like what's the difference? Nah, I haven't heard that. Yeah, like so basically a lot of people kind of like want to define what art is and what the design is. So a lot of people will say that art is kind of more um, subjective Art okay. is more like based on feeling, and it's it's freer, mm-hmm. and more like um, uh, emotive. Like, okay. but design mm-hmm. is more structural. It's more structured. It's more like um, planned out. Really. Yeah. Planned out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's more for a purpose. Okay. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and that's definitely what architecture is like. Yeah, okay. you know what I'm saying, because if you mess that up, like the mm-hmm. ceiling's coming down. You know <laughs> it still requires a, a level a of level creativity, of art, though. Yeah, one thousand percent. Because that's the first. That's the first stage. Mm-hmm. When you, once you the curate yeah, yeah. what exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. what what you're trying to do with it, that's when you come in and then you start to understand how to actually make it happen in real life. Mm. So I feel like that helped me a lot 
as well me personally in terms of like just execution in general mm. like so like transferable skills yeah like yeah. even have an idea how do you actualize it you know what i'm saying like i always foundation say foundation stuff blueprint like, yeah i always say like ideas are cool but execution is everything I'm mm. so <laughs> that's, yeah like, that's good. everyone can have ideas you can have cool ideas and stuff but mm. it's about how you execute it that's the that's what's gonna be the most like fruitful thing of the whole thing that's so, true. so you see that yeah so i remember when i started doing trying to do the creativity route mm. yeah when it came to the execution doubt crept in mm. and then i gave my reasons i gave myself reasons not to execute mm. did you face that at any point yeah i would say yeah but at the same time like it would just be certain things like because at the end of the day when i started it was there was no money like at all you know what i'm saying like just literally using your skills and what you've learned before and tapping into people and their their skills and having a vision and like making people excited about what you're trying to do um but in terms of like me kind of convincing myself of not doing something for um or executing certain things for some constraints it might be that it's just not the right time. It's not that it's not going to yeah. happen. It's just like not right now. Mm-hmm. It's like you have a plan. Okay, it's probably not going to work right now because it, this, this, that. And usually the main thing is like money, right? So mm-hmm. like maybe down the line, it's something in the roller decks that you can like pull out and be like, yeah, yeah let's do this. No, I hear that. I hear that. Because like, like even with this um uh, event that I was talking about with you guys, I've always wanted to do like a music based thing. Plug it in, plug it in. So what's the event? So it's like there's this event that we're running on March fifth at Peckham Levels. So it's called Based. Um, so there's two meanings to it. So Based is in like everyone knows like Lil B, right? Yeah. So yeah. That kind of. I love you, Base God. Yeah, Base God. <laughs> kind of thing, like, so basically, just like paying homage to that and just like an underground energy, like underground vibes, like um, basement. You know what I'm saying basement okay. type of feel, um, and also in terms of mu- a musical sense, it's like bass, like bass music, lo fi, mm. um, 808s, like you know what I'm saying dirty, gritty. Okay. So that's the idea. So we got like three artists, three DJs. Shout out to um, Bijou, shout out to Vince, um, shout out to Theodore Black, and then we got some cool DJs as well, like Selector Suave, No Saw, and um, DJ Nico, we're gonna be like spinning on the day and stuff. So you, you're telling me that uh, you're trying to like emulate like a ballroom vibe, so an intimate vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, like very intimate, very like close knit, like artists and um, and audience like connections, like really close. Yeah. Type of feel. Also recording it as well. Um, so like it can live online. That's that's important. Archival. That's yeah. yeah. We're missing that though because since ballroom went like this. I've been missing that. I loved yeah. that about Bell Room back in the day. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they're still doing their thing. They do um, it every now and then. Oh, do they? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, okay. they're still doing their thing. Like, And obviously, like that's why Yeah, we wanted to tap into that energy because, like, yeah, it's dope that they do that, but maybe we can kind of do it in a slightly different way. Yeah. And yeah. Like, Vince has performed multiple times on Bell Room, actually, but it's just, like, us, like, being a bit more homegrown with it. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, doing some yeah. cool stuff, like, with some of a talent that maybe have, haven't had the opportunity and just having a go at it because like a lot of times for me i tap into things that are bigger than what anything that i'm doing mm-hmm. but it's like why can't i just do that maybe at in a smaller scale maybe mm. not even at a lower level but a smaller scale you know what i'm saying yeah no i agree with that i respect that because like um, yet again when i was running through your website and i was seeing the shoots you done yeah, yeah and the fact that you get booked for by uh pr agencies mm-hmm. yeah and Marketing, marketing agencies yeah. to do the shoots mm-hmm. uh i could see that that you're able to tap into something and spin it in your own unique way which is interesting yeah appreciate that man thank you bro. Yeah, like like you like i said before just like over time just learning and developing stuff because when i started like we just were just writing articles like randomly like mm-hmm. we had no connections to no prs no nothing mm-hmm. blah blah and I started to realize that one or two people reach out to them to us. Mm. I was like, "Oh, okay, so this is a thing. So why can't I, why don't, don't I do my research and look at other agencies that maybe have more of the talent that we want to work with mm-hmm. and see like how we can connect and blah blah." blah. How and we can make it work? Yeah. 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 And she, luckily, like a lot of them have been interested so far, so it's good. Like that, I feel like 
right now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're super, we're super like it's that. We're not super established, but like I feel like we're I mean, we're in a good place now. No, nah, I've seen yeah. that some of the people that you worked with. I would say it wouldn't be as stre- yeah, it wouldn't be as stressed. Yeah. 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 Even presentation wise, that, was big that for me, though. like this looks serious. It does yeah. look serious, yeah. you know. Even feels been. serious, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's heavy. yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, definitely, like because if you read anything about um kind of like a blurb or like a bio, and us, like I always want to make sure we put the words high quality in there. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, High quality, um, yeah, production, high quality visuals, high quality like written work, and all that stuff. So and you can see it as well. Yeah, we're 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 small, but we give you the best level of thing. So if you were to give us like the resources to mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like maybe two, even you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what was the process like of of creating a print magazine as well? What what was that? Okay, so like initially, like at first, yeah. Okay, so we did issue three. Okay, so in, let me go back. Like, start twenty seventeen, mm-hmm. we dropped in. So I started in September. We dropped in November. Okay, and then I started working on the next one straight away, and then we dropped that in January. Okay, like and to be fair, a lot of this stuff like it wasn't like, um primary content it wasn't stuff that like we had made and stuff like that maybe just a cover shoot or one or two things like we would shoot it but it wasn't like every like a, a majority of stuff in there mm. so but just think about it though like from september to november you release a magazine yeah, that's nuts. and then from november to january you release another one and then from january to march you release another one and like <laughs> that sounds so, very like organized like you had yeah. an aim you had a plan did you yeah. see all of like what you've got now with New Wave in like the inception of the idea. Like Low what key. was what was it a seed that kind of grew? Or yeah, so it? like initially it was just like a, side, a, a a promotional project, like a side project for my architecture stuff to be yeah. to be yeah. totally mm. real. You know what I'm saying like it was just something to show people that I've done something. It always starts from something yeah, else. Yeah, because like just initially with architecture, like it was a thing where it would took up so much of my time yeah. that in the summer I just wanted to chill. Like you I didn't want to do nothing. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to just chill and just like do nothing, but it did look he hurt me though because like at that time I maybe should have been trying to get into a space of like um, an apprenticeship somewhere yeah. or something like that, blah blah. Because that's when you build the relationships, and by the time you come out of uni, you can just go back Your to what they're yeah. saying. Yeah. And that's what I'm impressed about about like young people nowadays. Like a lot of young people want to intern for us, like, and they're like seventeen, nineteen. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, when I was your age, I was chilling. Yeah, like, a lot of this generation is quite driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, I, love yeah. It. I love to see it. And like, um, yeah, just going back to what we were doing, um, it was just like a, a side project like mm-hmm. that I started. But then I think when we dropped the third one, going back to your question as well, like that's when I was like, okay, let's take this seriously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, there's options. I remember having a conversation with one, one of my friends, joking, um, Cause we we still like do something like like work stuff before, and I just liked his um his like mentality on business and stuff. Okay, he was younger than me, but mm-hmm. it felt like he, he was older than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he looked older than me too, and he knows it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, I just remember asking him the question like, "Yo, okay, I've got this magazine thing. It's some cool stuff. Mm. Like, how do I make it into a business?" And he was like, "Bro." Like the book or the magazine isn't the business. You're the business. Like your skills are the business. Like your is goods and services. Like the services that you provide to make that is what's gonna make you the money that you wanna make out mm-hmm. of this business. So that's when I started to understand, oh wow, like yeah, let me separate it. There's the magazine, there's the then the studio. The studio creates the magazine and then the studio can create the magazines for other people or create content for other people mm-hmm. yeah. blah, blah blah and then this is just your like yeah <laughs> it's like it's like your um first bag portfolio it's yeah, like yeah, your yeah. um it. it's, your, it's your showroom basically mm, okay. you, know what I'm saying? you know how like directors do like show reels and stuff yeah, 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 yeah. like I, I was running through yet again i was running through your website mm. yeah and i did see that distinction where you did split the studio mm. from the services the studio provides mm. and then you could see that the studio has a nice organizational structure mm. because I saw some of the works you done with Samwise, mm. 
Yeah, you worked to something, man. That All was right. big for us, man. Like, huge to this day. Shout out G Lo. Like, I tell him this every time I see him, man. I like, was big. That was huge, super big for me. Aesthetic wow, wise, you. that was just nice. That was top stuff, man. I Thank swear. You, man. you don't stop with Big Zoo as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Shout yeah. out Big Zoo. I, I, did I see uh, Kojo? I did. Oh, did I see him? Nah, I didn't see Kojo. Koji Koji Radical. Koji, Koji Radical. Yeah. Um, not yet. That. We haven't worked with him yet, but like. Well, speak down to existence. Yeah. <laughs> speak down to existence. Yeah, definitely. But I was going to say, like, what type of content is your favorite to shoot? Because you do shoot a different a variety of it. Um, I just love, I love editorials, man. Like, like, it's like fashion editorials, like. It shows. Yeah, like, <laughs> um, because there's this shoot on the last issue that we did with Kacian. Mm. You guys know Kacian? Like, yeah, he's like a dope um rising artist as well. Yeah. Um and yeah, like that was just like mad creative. Like he like got like fake blood and put it on him and oh. like some like samurai swords. Cause that that um shoot also conceptualizing things because that shoot was kind of based on like movie characters. So three movie characters. It's funny that he's got a song called Movie Shit right now, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. But yeah, so we wanted to depict him as like Three movie characters. So, one was Jet Li. Mm. Was Jet Li? No, Bruce Lee. One was Bruce Lee. One was um, Neo from the Matrix, and the third one was like the Joker. Okay. So, like with each of those, it was like just getting, and it wasn't even like high end arms. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it was just cool stuff from like maybe indie designers or maybe some that I are just not as known but like they're very they're very good yeah just cool stuff like that um he's having fun yeah the stylist Malcolm he always kills it like I love that's why I love working with him because like every time like he just does some like just weird stuff nothing's off limits yeah yeah, and I'm like like, yeah that's that's dope that's hard I I mess with it like he styled Jid for us as well and yeah like he had this hat with like no top Mm. so like his dreads could come out and at first I was like Ah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh, but no, Jid liked it though. He liked it, and I was like, "Okay, cool. If he likes it, then I yeah, love it." Yeah, like, and it'll turn out hard. So yeah. How like, how and where did you like build your connections to like be able to run, uh, like studio? Wait, yeah, essentially. Um, Gmail. So, like, okay, cool. <laughs> Gmail. <I'm joking> <laughs> Gmail. Um, like just going out, like literally as well, like er- in the early days. Shout out to Bijou, like, um, he was the one that really, like, gave me certain things in terms of understanding the space. Because initially, like, coming from architecture school, I went to Kent, mm-hmm. came back. I was never really, like, that, you know what I'm saying, the outside guy, you know what I'm saying? I was never really, like, out like that and stuff. But I, I, during this time when I started, I I started going out with intention. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I want to meet this person. I know they're going to be here. Let me speak to them when I get okay. there. I want to meet that person, blah, 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 this and that. And then from there, that's when, like, I started to get the name out there, blah, blah, And I'll always carry, like, a copy of me. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. So it was just like that. Not playing around. Like that. Not playing yeah, around at all. Nah, honestly, it was, like, on some mixtape shit, for real. <laughs> <That's it>. like, <laughs> nah, you got to respect man that do that, because it's, like, them, you know them, I mean, business. Mm. Yeah. It's dedication. Yeah. So not playing it shows around. passion as well. Yeah. Especially, Especially how heavy that is yeah, as well. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know some yeah. that's a proper magazine yeah, that's like yeah, Vogue yeah. and all, all yeah. them things there like yeah like that's that's that's, that's what we're aiming for like that type of like lane is what we're on and like yeah I know a lot of people will probably be like oh I don't want to speak there's another story as well like I remember I think when Skepta had this pop up um, a few years ago for like mains yeah like a few years ago like I think this was like 2018 mm. yeah, and so. um yeah me and a friend we just went there on a whim like and I had the mag with me as well, like carrying it. And then he wasn't there for a while, but then he showed up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I saw him. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, that's Skepta, man. <laughs> so it was, it, it was kind of like, damn, like, am I really going to talk to Skepta right now? For my <laughs> shit? And then, yeah, so I spoke to him real quick. And then he didn't say too much, but at that moment, it meant a lot. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm. like, he's like, oh, yeah, what? Well, this is your thing. Oh, yeah, that's dope. Like, keep doing it, blah, blah, blah. X, Y, Z. And yeah, like that was that was a moment at that time, just to keep going, man. And it was it was cool. And I'm sure he probably n- doesn't even remember that at all, but it was good. You remember it? That's what that counts, yeah. man. True, that true, true. true. Counts, man. He probably does as well. That's what you think. You probably yeah, see him again. He'd be like, ah, oh, 
Fuck you mean, <laughs> you you But yeah, know. I mean, like, you just, to, you I say know. that to say that, like, bro, speak to whoever, man. Yeah. It doesn't matter, bro. Like, a friend of mine says the same thing. She's like, in, in this life, you can't, you can't have shame. You can't be embarrassed to like, especially if you're get, doing your, something. Yeah, that, like, like you're trying to get something off saying? the ground. You have to have it. Be it shameless. doesn't show embarrassment or like, I don't think it is like that. It's more, it drive. It, yeah, it shows drive and mm. that you're not really, you don't care enough to <laughs> let all the other shit affect. Be shameless. Your own belief. Yeah, exactly. Be shameless. Twenty twenty two, man. Yeah. Bro, be shameless, especially if you're if you believe in what you're doing. Yeah. Like, well, how do you deal with other people trying to? So you step to someone with your dream, and then someone tries to like belittle it. How do you deal with that? Bro, like. Shrug it off your shoulder, man. Because, okay, so there's two sides to this. There's one side where you have to be very self-aware and understand people as well. Mm. Because, like, so the reason why someone might, like, shoot down your idea or whatever may have nothing to do with your idea or you, bro. Yeah. It's just about them and their perspective on things. So when you can sense, like, a certain inner kind of motive, mm. everyone has their own motive, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it even comes off yeah without them even knowing. That's why I said be self aware, because if if you can, if you're saying something to someone yeah, and you and yourself you know why you're saying it to that mm-hmm. person, mm-hmm. yeah, then it's kind of easier for you to understand why other people say things to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, for example, if we're having a conversation now, and I show you like, um, I tell you I'm I'm trying to start a podcast and things like that, blah blah, and then, but I've seen other people start podcasts and it's not gone well. Mm. Or something, or like I start try to start on myself and it didn't go that well, or blah blah. blah. Or I've seen one that went well, mm. but I feel like this is the only way to do it. Yeah. Now my perspective is gonna come onto your thing. It's projection, yeah. exactly. Essentially, yeah. yeah. People doubting themselves and they try to make you doubt yourself. One hundred percent. Like so, if you recognize that, then you can kind of pick apart the thing because like everything is like really complex in it. So you can kind of see okay this makes sense but they said this in attachment to that yeah, because yeah. this is like their own self-guilt or their mm-hmm. own um uh what was the word you used again projection, projection. yeah, yeah. Projection. yeah. They're, they're, they're projecting they're projecting so it's like separating those things and someone might say 90 percent of nonsense to you mm-hmm. take take the 10 percent though mm. don't just throw everything away yeah. you know what i'm saying like take the 10 percent and, and and run with it and yeah just like that's kind of how you kind of deal with it like you know what i'm saying okay i hear that i hear that which I, is important yeah, yeah. has there been like a point where you've received that either criticism or someone else doubting you and you was like you had that moment itself when it's like oh he, that person might be right maybe i need to mm. rethink certain things not necessarily oh i need to stop this but like oh maybe i need to just tweak this about how i'm going about things is that, has that um, yeah yeah though? yeah like i'm just trying to think like I'm, that sounds I'm, like constructive criticism as opposed to like someone but sometimes people, shitting on your ideas sometimes people will shit on your ideas it sounds like they're shitting on your ideas because of the tone they say mm. it in, you know what i mean but when you like deep the words actually saying as you said before the night 90 percent might be bullshit mm. then that there's like a 10 percent mm. it's like oh shit mm. you might be right mm. yeah no, I agree. I agree. And then that's important though because it takes a level of like uh, self understanding, like you said, yeah, to even be able to decipher that to begin with. Because initially, people hold feelings, mm-hmm. yeah, because like, oh, bro, I want to be a rapper, but bro, can you really rap like that? And then mm-hmm. you're like, oh shit, can yeah. I really rap like that? One hundred percent. Like you, they, their self doubt kind of creeps into you. Yeah. yeah. But I would say any moments that I've I've gone through that, it's probably like. Even been in house, man, with your, like with the family and mm-hmm, stuff like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying, like, just they've gone through certain things and stages in their life and stuff, and like they don't understand the space that we're in. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's yeah. difficult to communicate that. Um, but also, how I how I also see that year is that like showing and proving. Because if you put if you put the money on the table, if you put the Tangible result. The yeah. tangible result yeah. on the table. If you put the magazine on the table, the energy is different. Mm. Straight away. No, I agree. Definitely. Is that 
when I was younger, that used to piss me off. Mm. That like to certain people that I, was, I wouldn't say shit on you, but they wouldn't be very supporting mm. until you come with the actual results. And then then they want to. That's like, when they want to. You know what I'm saying? I think like, that's a very human thing, though. Like they, very, people need to see it before see, they can see believe. Seeing is believing. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing is believing. You know what I'm saying? But that's why, like, if you believe before you see it, that's like most time you're the one that actualizes it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Rather than someone else. Mm. Like, you feel me? The true, like, the truly special people are the people that can, like, make other people believe in their vision before it's even been carried out. Mm. Mm. No, well, you have the you have the foresight yeah. and the faith in that person to 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 actually believe they're capable yeah. of doing what they've said, especially when, like, I always think if my child came to me with a plan or like asked for a shitload of money mm. for a business idea mm. but you come no. with a plan yeah. or a whole presentation and you tell me exactly how you're going to yeah. execute it and i have the means to do yeah. that for you mm. i'm 100 percent believing in you i have no like your family yeah, i have true. reason to believe in you and 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 be able to do that for you yeah. okay so it's, I think but it's, even it's conditional isn't it it's on a, on a side note as well though like if the person comes to you and they're like yo i just want some bread like I'm trying to do this thing and they don't have a plan. plan yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Then, you and it's a no, you know what I'm saying? So it's like... Oh, it's a no? Yeah, definitely. Bro, when I... Dragon's Den type shit. Bro, <laughs> it's a no for me. nah, I don't know. Is that fair though? Because when I started certain shit, I didn't have the, what I knew now, now and the way I'm able to build it now, I didn't have that in my mind back then. Yeah, one hundred percent. But you have to do the work. I think it's lazy and it's actually quite rude if you come to someone asking for a crap ton of money to start something and you've not even taken the time yeah, yeah, to at least out. lay out how you're going to execute that. You did the work. You felt like you needed to do the work That's mm. and, and you did that and then that's when you probably felt like, okay, now I can seek for help from other instances. I'm just talking about like from the very initial things, like okay. it's like very early, like infant stages, like and you're already seeking help and you haven't done for self. Mm. Yeah. Like, no, no, I hear that, I hear that. That's important gems being yeah. dropped there because a lot of people, you know, the early stages where you have to just like walk through the wilderness by yourself and then mm. figure shit out. Yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah, definitely. Ins- I would say Instagram kind of eliminated that somewhat. <laughs> like the expectation that, like, for example, you see with you, you went through uni, you graduated from uni. There's mm. a time period in which you have to go outside and then build connections. Then you pull from your experiences to like build a tool set so you could be able to do that. That mm. took time. Yeah, and then you had to build it to a certain stage in which people felt comfortable to collab with you. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, that aspect is not really pushed that much when it comes to like the way us as creatives communicate on social media. Mm. Why do you think that's the case? Um, I feel like because everyone is like, there is a sense of community, like in terms of as you see people at certain stages, they might be a bit further along than you. Mm. But what I've come to find out is that everyone's going through their own struggle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Everyone's going through their own, like... Um, it's like everyone's doing their own thing. Yeah. But they're in the, within the same space, but they're, they're all individuals yeah. in that space. And also, mm. like, the the element of this is so perfect, like, once you get behind that, it's like, it's not always perfect. Yeah. So they relate to, they relate to what you're going through more than you think. No, I agree. I agree. And they've been through it. I agree yeah. with that. So I agree with that perfectly. I think it's a human thing where we relate to pain and struggle more than success, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Like when I remember growing up and just watching sports in general, whenever someone got to the top, there was always like an attempt to like drag them down. Yeah. But like when someone's rising to the top, everyone's with Support, them. Yeah. 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 As soon as they reach that, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is bad, you know. What's the top for you? How would you define that? Like, what's the top for me? Like, the top for me is like infiltrating different like spaces in the creative world, mm. and being able to execute ideas on all of those spectrums like freely. So whether that be one day I'm probably making a film, or the next day I'm shooting an editorial, mm. um, or a campaign. Or the next day, like, I'm even working on, like, clothes and stuff. And mm. All that stuff. Oh, so what, you're working on, what, dropping your own line or? Um, that's something I've had in the works, like, since the beginning. Well, not in the works. It's not in the works. I've just been doing, the, like, the... the Concept. Concept. Yeah. As in, yeah. You've been doing awesome. the... the, the um, Stylish. The education a little bit. Mm. So. so, in your personal opinion, what's harder? 
surviving in the clothing industry, the fashion clothing industry, or the magazine industry. They're like being competitive in them. Or even events as well. Oh, yeah, and even events. What's harder to you? Damn, it's all hard. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, but whew, hard, the hardest? Yeah. Maybe events, you know? Okay. Like, maybe events because, like, getting f- people physically to come to f- things. It's, yeah. Mm. Like, even, like, after the whole lockdown thing of, like, everyone wanted to be outside and stuff like that, like, you still need to push. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's mm. why even this event that we got coming up, it's like, yeah, like, you need a month to really push. Yeah. Because mm. you can't just be like, oh, yeah, we have X amount of followers on Instagram, drop yeah. a flyer. you got to like, convince people why they should yeah. come. Exactly. Like, only a, only certain people can do that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, I understand that. I'm not at that stage yet. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hopefully we can be, but, like, we still need to do the work to push certain things. So, like, that's why, like, in the event space, like, getting people to physically come to things on a consistent basis yeah. like it's a it's a big thing that's why I rate um Seshi a lot like with what he does um Shout out Mr. I am next okay like, bro this guy has events on events on events on events on events <laughs> and it's all everything is just shut down like crazy that's crazy I think that's the final boss of it like engagement of, like yeah. people physically coming to yeah. to yeah. your thing coming to yeah. see you coming to uh or buy your stuff I think that's the uh, it's the equivalent of like rappers and concerts. Yeah, if you know what I mean, you can you can really make money money doing that. Yeah, yeah, no, most, most definitely. Like it's very lucrative. Like I mean, even even in the artist space, like a lot of the money that they make for themselves personally comes from touring. Yeah. So like, def definitely, it's it's a big thing. Like, and that's where you build the real 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 connection. Yeah, yeah that's like, physical remember, engagement. It's not. I'm the sure same each and every one of us has had online. an experience here where you might not have messed with an artist that much, mm-hmm. but when you go to their show it's like damn i actually messed with this person yeah, yeah, literally yeah. last summer interviews yeah. does that for me as well yeah yeah, yeah. No, for like sure. a good interview that, well, like, will have yeah. me fucking with someone that that as well yeah, yeah. i remember well. i saw the no jumper king von one uh, yeah yeah so i went back and i started rinsing out bonnie that, <laughs> that as well because yeah. I, I remember as well uh, that that's a key thing it happens to me a lot but one in particular that i really remember was when um Shekos did an interview with No Jumper, mm. and then he was talking about like him, his his mom, basically like taking him back to Senegal. Yeah, like, I remember that interview. Him <laughs> having to like rethink what life is about and how to kind of like just go from a New York kid, you know what I'm saying, in the scene or whatever, over there, modeling, See kid. doing Yeezy season mm. three and stuff like that, to mm. then like chilling with like goats back and stuff. home. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying in in Senegal, and. It made me because obviously when you listen to his music, it's very like you can say it's kind of surface level. You can say it's kind of like just like repetitive in a sense, but it made me understand him more, mm. and then that made me understand his music more. Yeah. And um, yeah, like it, go, it goes a long way. Okay, cool. That, Derek, that, I was jump in. speaking on that. That was like uh, schoolboy Q. Every interview. Yeah. Oh, every interview, like, yeah. This guy's amazing. Yeah. Well, he doesn't and he doesn't do that much. Yeah, well. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when he steps out, it's like, this is going to be half an hour of greatness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I okay. feel the same about Vince as well. Yeah. Whenever yeah, the staple steps behind a, I, a, a mic. Yeah. yeah. I think he's hilarious and, as yeah. well. <laughs> and, and the god of interviews, Kanye. Kanye, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been on a good like, run, Kanye. Because this guy is now, he's fearless. He just says shit. Yeah. You don't care. He's at I the remember, point where you don't have to care. Sorry. I remember. No, sorry. Sorry to cut you off, but like, I remember like 2013. Like, um, was that Sway? Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, this guy knows bro, them. That interview is so <laughs> fucking legendary. Mm. Like, because basically, I was like doing t- to go to different places to like find a place for uni. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, you know, you have the interviews, you do the interviews and stuff. It's the first time I ever went to Newcastle. I was like, bro, like, I went to Newcastle on my J's, like, so I remember I was at the in a hotel room. That was the day that the interview came up, and then I just watched it. And the fam, I can't lie to you, that shit made me rethink everything. Like, cause even before at that point, I didn't have, I didn't know what a creative director was. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what a flipping, um, just like the creative industry was to an extent. I just knew, go to school, get your architecture degree, do your part one, part two work in that field and then maybe you can kind of like venture out into bit, like yeah. other stuff and mm. do an artwork for an artist here mm. and there. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But um but that made me like 
do more research and learning, first of all. And it made me, like, a lot more fearless, like, in terms of, bro, you can kind of, with, yeah. with with any constraints that you have, bro, just do it. Because that interview ate so well. No, I agree, I agree. Because if you watch that back then, mm. and then him going through the struggles of what he was going through, and where he is now, mm. it's like, damn, like, he really did that, like. No, no, I agree. Like, so. Derek, I'm going to ask you a favor, yeah? yeah? We're coming to near the end, so mm. I'm going yeah, to open the floor up. to you, yeah? Mm. Plug your shit. Plug everything. Plug it. Plug yeah, everything. Dope, dope. So first of all, <laughs> like, yeah. we, we got the new magazines out right now, issue 10. So it's, it's it's Name, name, name. We didn't need the names. Yeah, so we got we got um, Roy Woods on there. We got um, Race Corrupted Mind, who's uh, Travis Scott's photographer. We did an interview with him. Um, Henok Celeste, who's the art director of Brockhampton. We did an interview with him in there. Ooh. Um, there's like an editorial, fashion editorial we did with like um Sandro Paris and MM6 Mesa Marzella. There's like um an interview with uh a cool London based artist called um Shaquille Keith, um, who's on, on Pack, um, you know, the YouTube channel over Pack Works, yeah, Pack, yeah. No, not Pack Works, Pack Official, okay, uh, okay, but like he's just dope, like he just does cool stuff in, in the fashion space, art space. Like a very dope artist, so that's in there as well. Um, Riley Ritchie he was on Game of Thrones. He was on the co- he's on one of the covers. So yeah, man, there's a lot of stuff in there, like inspirational content as well that you can like li- read mm. through. Inspirational visual content as well that you can c- get inspired by. Um, a lot of fashion editorials and pieces from like up and coming people. So there's that. They we got um. I know the next one coming out in hopefully around April time. Do you know who's going to be the main centerpiece for that? For the next one? Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. We'll, we'll definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, no, it's, it's in the works. Cool, it's in the cool, works cool. That's fine. That's fine. And then do you want to plug the event one more time? So yeah, the people yeah. So the base event, here. like, please come out to this. Like, it's definitely going to be a vibe with Vince, B, um, Bijou, um, Theodore Black, Selector Suave, No Saw, DJ Nico. We're going to shut it down. So, um, it's yeah, gonna yeah. be like a very intimate vibe. Um, think body room, think like just high energy, and yeah, please come down to that, man. Tickets are going live on. Sh- it, by the time this is out, tickets should be live. So, um, yeah, you can go kind of. Where can they get it? Ticket Eventbrite. So okay. you can get it on Eventbrite, or you can get it through our, our website, newwavemagazine dot com. Also, there's a lot of stuff on there as well, like on the website, just on a daily basis, like. Album reviews. We just did one on the weekend's album. We just did one on like nice. Gunner's album as well. Like in depth stuff and also like fashion um, features and film features and arts and culture. Like, no, for your fashion reviews, do you have uh, visuals for that or is it just? Um, it's written? just like it's written right now, but we're gonna start working more on like developing our YouTube channel with like cool content on there. So on YouTube, it's just like New Wave Magazine. If people wanted to, uh, Pitch the content to you to host yeah. on the potential YouTube yeah, it's side. Like, is that possible? Sh- yeah, literally. Like so, on our homepage, no, on our contacts page on our website, you should be able to like find an email address, to, like reach out to us. Okay. Um, and even straight through like um our Instagram. So our Instagram is N Wave Magazine. So like, yeah, we just post content daily on there. Um, in the music space, fashion space, art space, like just like quality stuff that we just vibe with and mess with whether it be from the uk germany like the us wherever um, that, you see the uh contact this you gave that's the same contact details that our uh, uh, corporation or business can use to contact you for a commission yeah 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 like so um yeah that same that same email address info at newwavemagazine.com like that's where you can kind of like reach out to us like um for anything really uh okay anything uh, and then lastly yeah how would you describe the spirit of the studio for a listener um i would say like we try to incorporate bridging the gap between high um not so emerging and established so like that's our ethos like bringing in the emerging and established like into the same space whether it be, for example, we're ha- working with a high-profile artist and then some of the people in the crew are up-and-coming talents and, like, this is, like, their first, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's like a combination of paying it forward and showcasing exactly talent. stuff yeah, like that awesome. or it could be like uh a n- not recognized talent like that but it's just like someone that's like super dope you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? like it's very talented or yeah just things like that and in terms of creating content just like making sure that we're me, me doing things that are very high standard um consistently okay Okay, thank you very much, Derek. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you guys, man. It's Appreciate awesome, you guys. Man. Man. You guys keep it going as well, man. This is sick. Like, oh, we try, bro. Development is trying very yeah, evident, so, like, bro, oh, We tried. <laughs> stop it. Stop it, you. Yeah, and your new wave motivation. So, we yeah, try. Nah, definitely, like, likewise on your end, so. It looks so nice right? on the table. Are you yeah, it does. Take this in, bro. <laughs> yeah. Take this in. Look at the back. Do, the yeah, yeah. Oh, do the, do the 360 again. <laughs> do it again. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, Come on, bro. Yeah, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank you. No problem, bro. No problem.